All right, guys, it's here. Hi, guys. So, as you may know, I'm a huge Goodreads user. Like, I'm a I guess actually my count is actually huge, but like what I mean is I use Goodreads a lot. The so one thing Goodreads does every year is the Goodreads Choice Awards, and it's actually all user voted. You have to have an account on Goodreads, and then you vote what your absolute favorite book of all these different genres and subgenres. I don't actively try to read for the Goodreads Choice Awards, like whatever books come my way, come my way. However, comma. This year, I feel like I have read a ton of books that were published in 2020, like way more than usual. So one, I'm like super excited to see which books of the ones I've read and reviewed have made it to the Goodreads choice, like the, I don't know, the nominees, I guess. And I'm also excited to make my predictions which one I think will be the top. Okay, let's get started. It's here. We're looking at it. Okay. So, as always, we are doing the opening round, and then there's the semi-final, and then finally the final round. So, opening round has the most books available. It has all of the options. All right, let's start with fiction. Okay. Gosh, okay. I was, like, so confident. And, oh, ooh, I have this one. I have this one. I have not read it yet. I do have a copy of it though. I guess it's the one I have to vote for because of the best fiction, it's the only one I have. I feel a little weird voting for it even though I haven't read it, but like... All right, let's hit mystery and th thriller. So, Sundown Motel. If you guys have been watching my channel, I did say way early on that that was going to be one of my best reads of 2020. It's on here. So I got that going for me at least. <laughs> oh, and it's got Stuart Turton's. So Stuart Turton, if you guys remember, writer of The Seven and a Half Deaths of Evelyn Hardcastle. Amazing book. This is his new one. It takes place on a ship. It's kind of like a Sherlock Holmesy one. Between the two, I'm going to have to say Devil in the Dark Water. <laughs> I just, ah, uh, Stuart Turton, he knows how to turn a story. It is gorgeous. Okay, hitting historical fiction, like, I don't think I'm going to have anything on here because, like, I don't really read historical fiction. I'll read it if it's sent to me, but like, I don't seek it out. And I got absolutely nothing. I knew it. I knew I wasn't going to get anything on this list. Okay. So then we have a conundrum. Do I vote for something knowing that I haven't read it or do I just not vote at all? To be honest, I still vote if I haven't read a book just because is fun. <laughs> I want to be able to vote. Uh, of these, I am most intrigued by the Jane Austen Society. So that one will have my vote. Fantasy. Okay, fantasy. I should have a ton of fantasy. Let's see. Okay, I've read A Deadly Education. Check. The Invisible Life of Addie LaRue. Check. Sarah J. Maas. Check. Oh, that's it. Okay. I guess if we define a ton as triple what I had under the general fiction one, then yeah, definitely have a ton. Sarah J. Maas. Ah, uh, so this is her latest book. It's over 700 pages. That being said, the actual book was incredible. And these two were good as well. Like they, no, not knocking these two of the ones I've read, but it's Sarah J. Moss, guys. I gotta vote Sarah J. Moss. There's no option not to. All right. Next up, romance. I doubt I'm gonna have any of these, but you never know. Um. Okay, something to talk about. I got that one. <gasps> Boyfriend material, guys. Oh, it made it to romance. And I've got a copy of that just came in from the library. Haven't read it yet. 
Uh, my friend Tucker, who I've done some collab videos with, he said this was the most disappointing read he's had of the year. <laughs> In a holidays, I don't have this one yet, but I did pre-order the Once Upon a Book Club box for their Christmas edition. The Christmas edition box, there we go. So of these, I am sorry, Berkeley, but I gotta go boyfriend material. It was so freaking cute. The, it's about a son of two rock stars has to get a cute and respectable boyfriend, otherwise his career is over. Enter Oliver the lawyer and the absolute opposite of Luke's type, but it's this one of those books where like they fit so well and you're just like you want them to be together so badly so of course of course I'm voting boyfriend material I am psyched that one oh, if that one doesn't win I'm gonna be so disappointed okay science fiction I might have a few here oh man I, I want to read this one so bad so I read Gideon the ninth it's like this futuristic democracy no necromancy futuristic ne necromancy book and Haro the Ninth is the second book of it and Gideon the Ninth was just it blew my mind I just read it over the summer I've been meaning to get a copy and I really want it <sighs> okay of these I've also read The Mother Code and To Sleep in the Sea of Stars this is actually I think this is also one that I had on my top 10 list when I made the predictions way back. Um, definitely a good one. Though. But I'm loyal. I gotta admit that. Christopher Poloni, like, ah, oh, I've been a fan of his forever, ever since the Aragon series came out. And of course, when To Sleep in a Sea of Stars, when that one came out, I did a reading vlog for it. I was so excited. Anyway, long story short, yeah, I gotta do this one. I've actually picked up quite a few horror books. I think I might have a few in here. So let's see. Absolutely nothing. Oh no, <laughs> I spoke too soon. All right, so of these ones, Max Brooks, classic. I loved his um, World, World War Z. And... I saw this one. I almost picked this one up from Nat Galley and I just decided not to at the very last minute. I probably should have. Dang it. Oh well. I'm going to vote Max Brooks. Loyalty to the author above all else, I guess. Alright, humor. I don't think I'll have anything on here. Oh, actually. I got a copy of this one. Currently reading it. And... I have this one on reserve from the library. Hey, Trixie and Katya, RuPaul's Drag Race. Recently got into that. Thank you, pandemic. Um, of these, well, you'll teach you RuPaul's Drag Race, I think. I haven't read it, but I do want to read it. So I'll just do that. <laughs> okay, nonfiction. All right, I'm not going to have anything nonfiction. I know that right now. I actually would probably feel a little guilty voting for this one, but that one is a cute cover. Sure. Memoirs and autobiographies. Let's see. Did I get anything in here? Oh, I just got a copy of this one coming in. I literally just is coming in like within like a couple of days. So I will be reading that one. I don't know if it's the best, but can't go wrong with Obama, right? All right. History and biography, uh, yeah, I knew I wasn't going to get anything here. Um, Eric Larson, I've read a few of his. Uh, I guess it's because it's the only author I know. I'll go with it. All right, science and technology. Why fish don't exist. Hmm, I thought I was going to get one from here. I guess not. This one sounds fun. The Book of Eels. I'm going to add that one to my want to reads. Where did it go? Want to read. Food and cookbooks. I 
don't have a ton of cookbooks. Hey, David Chang, eat a peach. That's not a cookbook. That's a book about food. It's a book about cooking, but it's not a cookbook. Don't know if that really belongs where it is, but I guess I'll vote for it because I have actually read that one and it was really good. Graphic novels and comics. I, oh, wait, wait, wait. I might have actually gotten one of these. Yep. No. Oh, Maggie Stiefvaters didn't make it. That's a little wild. Maggie Stiefvater, she wrote a comic book and it's called Swamp Thing. Oh, Fangirl, Rainbow Rowell. Haven't read it. I do want to, though. That sounds cool. I love Fangirl. Such a good book. All right, poetry, I'm going to tell you right now, I've got absolutely nothing in the poetry category because I'm not a poetry reviewer. Even though people ask me a million times, please review my poetry, and I'm like, I don't do it, and then they get mad. Let's go with Margaret Atwood because I recognize her. <laughs> debut novel. All right, I hit a lot of debut, debut novels this year, so I think I'm feeling good. I'm feeling like this has a distinct possibility. I might have more than three. Okay, Cemetery Boys. Yep. Ah, uh, dang it. Okay, so of all of these, the only one I've actually fully read is Cemetery Boys. And gosh dang, that was a good one. Guys, if you haven't, you should. It was really nice. All right, and then we have Young Adult. Okay, Young Adult is my jam. If I don't have a ton of young adult, I'm going to be devastated. Okay. Gravity of Us. I've read that one. Only Mostly Devastated. I've read that one. Oh no, that's it. I am devastated. I thought I was doing so good. Um, Only Mostly Devastated was absolutely adorable. And I fully confidently vote for that one. Young adult fantasy and science fiction. All right, maybe I'll have a few here. Um, oh, okay, I've read this one. Okay, here we go. Here's my, apparently, my genre is young adult fantasy and science fiction because I am killing it. I've read Cinderella's Dead. I've read Queen of Nothing. The Girl, Serpent Thorn, read it. Midnight Sun, read it. Currently reading All the Stars and Teeth. I read it. I read it. Got a copy. I read it. I read it. So... Actually, I kind of liked it better when I only read like two of them because it made an easier pick. All right, so I already voted you for best debut novel. Okay, let's just... Okay, this is a gay Cinderella story. Very cute. However, the evil characters were just a little bit unbelievably evil, if you know what I mean. So I'm not going to vote that one. I hated the first book of this series. Felt very formulaic, so I can't vote you. Queen of Nothing, oh my gosh, Holly Black, you kill me. This is the third book of the Folk of the Air series by Holly Black, and it was unsurprisingly absolutely gorgeous, and I loved it. Oh man, okay. So Girl, Serpent, Thorn, um, this one was good, comma. It felt a little telegraphed, if I'm going to be honest. Midnight Sun, this is Twilight from Edward's Perspective. This one is like... All these islands have different types of magic. One girl has like all of the powers of the islands and that kind of coincides as death magic. Oh, actually I didn't update that. Whoops. Currently reading. Add that to my 50 plus books I'm currently reading. Kingdom of Back from Mozart and his sister when they were real life, when they were kids, they had all of this fun world created called the Kingdom of Back where they were king and queen. And then... This book kind of takes that concept and runs with it. Like, what if there was actually a kingdom of back and they wanted to keep the Mozart siblings? This one is a gorgeous, gorgeous story about a trans boy and trying to kind of come into his manhood. That sounded weird. But for him, like, there's all these very important rituals where you become a man in his world. And he wants to do that, but his father is afraid of him doing that because he's afraid that his son will be rejected. Um, very good though. Fable, oh, this one is like, I picked it up purely because of the cover because it was so gorgeous. It was so flippin' gorgeous, I loved it. And I 
got it, but I haven't read it yet. <laughs> and I know I need to read it, but like, ah, oh, there's so many books I'm currently reading. Ballad of Songbirds and set in the Hunger Games world, but like 50 years before Katniss, this follows President Snow and his journey to evilhood. It was very entertaining. Legend Born literally just read that last week because it came in with the Owl Crate unboxing. Very excited about it. It was very good. Um, it was very complicated. Sorry, 500 pages. Ain't no joke. But it was a fun one. <sighs> you guys all know me. You knew that there was really no chance for any other book except for Midnight Sun. I'm weak. I know. All right. So then I guess we'll finish it up with... Uh, middle grade books and then the kids books um of the middle grade books well this one looks like fun sure <laughs> and picture books i might actually have a few on here because for some reason people are sending me a lot of picture books this year no of course not bird hugs that looks better okay all right guys that was my goodreads choice 2020 initial picks i'm going to be quickly reading some of the books i think might make it to this next round so that way i can kind of vote better <laughs> if that makes sense because now that i know which books are under the nominations i can kind of make sure that i've read them and make an informed decision for the next round that being said i am so excited like I honestly don't even know why because this is such a virtual reward and I get absolutely nothing from it, but it's just, it's fun. It's something fun to do. I look forward to it every year. All right. Thanks so much for watching and happy reading. Bye.